Welcome back to Red and Blue. I'm Scott McFarland in Washington. As Congress looks to avoid a government shutdown in nine days, formally authorizing the military for 2023 is also still on the agenda. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell talked about the importance of the NDAA, otherwise known as the National Defense Authorization Act, earlier today on the Senate floor. This strong bipartisan NDAA is a huge step in that direction. The bill tees up a significant and badly needed increase in defense spending, $45 billion above President Biden's insufficient request, and roughly $75 billion over last year's level. Once again, Congress agreed on a bipartisan basis that President Biden's defense budget request was anemic and insufficient. For more, Massachusetts Democratic Congressman and former Marine officer Seth Moulton joins us now from Capitol Hill. He's also a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Mr. Moulton, it's an especially busy day, so we're especially grateful for your time. You just heard Senator McConnell call this new military bill a huge step in the right direction. From what you've seen, do you agree? And if so, what are the most important parts of the bill? I don't often agree with Mitch McConnell, but in this case, I do. It's not perfect. I have plenty of objections. There were important provisions, such as protecting our Afghan allies, uh, that I had included in the House version of the bill that were then stripped out of the Senate version. So it's not perfect. I don't love it, but it absolutely moves the ball forward, and it's the right thing to do for our troops, and that's why I look forward to voting for it later today. We had been anticipating some floor action on this bill this afternoon, but it hasn't happened. Do you know what the holdup or the delay is? I don't know specifically, but the general consensus is that they're having trouble getting the numbers together. Uh, of course, there are Republicans who will vote against it uh, because they don't like something in the bill. There are uh, Democrats on the progressive wing of our party that will vote against it as well. This is always the problem with the defense bill. It's up to people in the middle, Democrats and Republicans, to come together uh, to do the right thing for our troops. But it's often the isolationists on the right in the Republican Party and the progressives on the left who found, find some objection to the bill and, and therefore don't want to support it. They characterize this as a must-pass piece of legislation. What are the implications if it doesn't pass before the end of the Congress? Well, first of all, let's talk about what it means for our troops. This bill includes important provisions uh, to raise pay and benefits for our troops at a time when inflation uh, is a huge issue for all Americans. It modernizes our defense in important ways to meet the threat rising the Pacific of China. I was just in Taiwan two months ago, and the threat from China is real. And our military commanders want new resources to meet that challenge. If we don't pass this bill, they won't get them. And ultimately, that means that Americans may lose their, lose their lives fighting a war that we should be able to prevent with the right preparations. Obviously, the Defense Department has been doing a lot to support the war in Ukraine. I mean, it's kind of ironic when you hear people in Congress uh, being such strong supporters of the Ukrainians and then talk about voting against our own defense bill, because, of course, a lot of the resources that go to Ukraine especially when it comes to the personnel that train uh, the, the, the Ukrainian troops and advise them on the ground, uh, that's coming through this defense bill. So there's a lot of good in this bill, and that's why we've got to get it passed, despite the fact that every one of us can come up with an objection if we want. Part of this vaccine mandate appears to have been lifted, the mandate for active duty and reserve military members. What impact is that going to have? And it seems like that's an acceptable change to House Democrats? Well, I don't know that it's acceptable in the, in the grand scheme of things, um, because I think it sends a mixed message to our troops. Uh, we mandate all kinds of vaccines in the military that are scientifically proven. There's no reason why we shouldn't mandate the COVID vaccine, which is scientifically proven as well. It's just because of Republicans playing politics, playing QAnon conspiracy theory politics with COVID that they want this out of the defense bill. But this is one of those tough compromises that we have to be willing to make in order to get the bill over the finish line. My hope is that the Department of Defense will revise the vaccine mandate to make it clear that there's a set of vaccines that apply across the board to everyone in the military, not just the COVID vaccine, but plenty of other vaccines that have been required for a long time. And that should be clarified by the Secretary of Defense in the future. 
But if we need to take that mandate out in order to get it over the finish line, it's a great example of a change that I don't like, but I'm willing to live with in order to support our troops. The military was losing a number of service members to this mandate. That's right. And this is one of the reasons why it sends a horribly mixed message to our troops. A lot of military uh, members are a good number, not a huge percentage, but a good number of troops were kicked out because they failed to follow a lawful order to get this vaccine. So to now go back and say, oh, we didn't really mean it, that wasn't an order that's important enough for us to keep in, sends a decidedly mixed message to our troops. It's one of the reasons why I have a big problem with this provision. But this is an example of the kind of compromise that has to go on in D.C. in order to get these things done. We can bicker about this over Christmas and into the new year and not ultimately convince Republicans to come to the side of common sense and keep this provision in the law. Or we can pass it today and get the troops and our commanders the resources that they need to continue to defend our country. In our final moments here, Congressman, have you been briefed by leadership or by your colleagues of where in the world they are and keeping the government funded and keeping the lights on December 16th? You know, there's probably as much speculation running around Capitol Hill as there is uh, all over America and, and at, at offices like yours who are trying to figure out what the, what the ultimate result will be. I've heard predictions all over the map. But I'll tell you this, if we don't come together and not just pass a continuing resolution to continue funding the government at current levels, but actually pass appropriations bill, come together on an omnibus to make new investments, make changes to our uh, investments that we need to meet the new challenges of the new year, then we're missing a huge opportunity, a huge opportunity to better support our troops, a huge opportunity to better support Americans. So let's come together, Democrats and Republicans, and actually do our job to pass an omnibus bill and not just settle for another continuing resolution. Congressman Seth Moulton, we're grateful for your time tonight. Thank you very much. Great to see you.